Hi team, welcome to the session on Coffee with Prab. And today we have a special guest, Miss Kavita. No need of introduction. She already had a great name in the LinkedIn. And uh, recently we did one video together and where she shared the experience about practical aspect of vendor risk assessment. But as as I've seen, a lot of people have shared the perspective about Prab. Can we have a one video on one session on vendor management process? So vendor management with vendor risk assessment by Kavita, it's a deadly combination of a content. Taking out the time in a, in a weekend, for the consultant is not an easy task. We have a lot of commitments, but hats off to Kavita for taking out the time on weekends to give back to society on the similar topics. And um, it is really an honor for us to have her on this particular channel. And uh, I'm sure, you know, we get a great wisdom thoughts from this particular session by the Kavita. Thank you, Kavita, for coming for this session. Thank you. Thank you, Prab. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. And all credit goes to Prab Nair. No, vice versa. So thanks for giving thanks for giving uh, your time for this particular session. It is not easy for taking out the time for the consultants and experts like you. And But taking out the time for such 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 things, it's really commendable. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prab. So, so what is special today in this coffee with Prab? Yeah, today's coffee is all about how do you cook something. <clears throat> how do how do you cook something? Okay. So you don't know what is something and where do you procure something? How to do it? So it's totally you need to get everything from from market. Okay. What do you need to purchase? Where do you need to purchase? How do you need to purchase? What is the quantity? How do you put all the ingredients together? And a beautiful recipe should be prepared out of it. Wow. Good illustration. <laughs> so this is all about uh, vendor management, a small session, which is about uh, vendor management. How do you uh, require your uh, gatherings? How do you put all your gatherings? That is your requirements together. And then how do you onboard the vendor? And a couple of steps which are uh, involved in the vendor management process. Why this matter? This is very much important that mm -hmm. why vendor management. You, you want something that every day in your daily daily day-to-day -day life, you mm -hmm. want so many things in your uh, project management activity or mm -hmm. your HRMS activity. You don't know whom to pick, how to mm -hmm. pick, who's mm -hmm. the right person to pick to run your project or run your organization effectively. For that, you need to have a right vendor in place. It is like, you know, uh, in the morning, I you know, we, stay, we, we start a day with a coffee and a tea, so right. we need a milk. So right. we have a milk vendor. So uh, we cannot buy a milk from a random vendor because he might make something and, you know, it, can, it can be good. Right. It's not good for the health. Right. So before we finalize any milk vendor, we do some kind of an assessment. We do it background is, check. So is this right. the same way we can? It is, it is the same way. A qualitative, quantitative, commercial and uh, testimony, everything put together. Mm. You have product that you will onboard it and mm. you start working uh, it's a vendor. It's a team. It's not even a product. You can say it's a team who is working in an external team who mm. will be part of your organization. And together, you will come out with a beautiful product. So, but in last 10 years, I have seen the trend of this particular thing, which is called vendor management and vendor risk assessment. Okay, mm -hmm. pretty much high in market. Before right. that, there was no trend like that. What is the reason? The reason is that you need to be very careful uh, while choosing any product. So mm. I, I'm buying a laptop. Mm. Okay. For example, I'm buying a mobile phone. To just to buy a mobile phone also, I do so much of uh, background verification. Uh, not a verification. I could say background uh, activities which I do. Which model I need to buy. What is my budget? What is mm. the color? and uh, the durability, the camera, and uh, the contract, and software upgrade, how frequently the software have been updated. So many parameters we check while buying a single mobile. True. So when, or, uh, when we are onboarding a vendor to our organization, we need to see that how much risk the vendor is carrying along with him. It is just not a vendor who will be onboarding. It is along with that we carry a resource, we carry risk. So how do you eliminate that risk you cannot eliminate any of this uh, any of the, but you can at least put some countermeasures proactive mm. measures or reactive measures can be taken while onboarding any of the vendor to the platform i agree right. i agree with that so uh, internally you put so much of security controls for example you put a cctv inside your house you put uh, uh, so biometric but you don't know a maid carries so much of a risk to your house. So you do mm. a back verification of a maid. Uh, at least in office, uh, when you put a CCTV, biometric, and so many security measures, there is a, a frisking machine at the entrance. 
Mm. In spite of that, we have so much of risk that we carry because there's a security guard where we where we fail to do the background verification of the security guard. Mm. HR will take so much of precautions to do the proactive measures to do the security background check of a resource, but they fail to do the security assessment for the guard who is monitoring everybody. And, and that is basically more from the perspective of organization safety that also matters. Organization right? safety that has to be ensured. So every aspect has to be considered while doing a vendor management. Vendor onboarding. Understood. It's not That's only listed. a technical aspect, it is also the physical aspect also has to be considered while doing a vendor onboarding. That's great. That's, that's great. So, so, uh, so you're going to start from completely basic because uh, so mm -hmm. some peers are basically new to the GRC part and all that. So are we considering the from the this is basic? A small uh, yeah. This is a very brief introduction about vendor risk management. Sorry, mm -hmm. vendor management. How do you onboard the vendor till uh, the sign off and the contract uh, uh, termination or onboarding? This is a small presentation. So in my next. Uh, presentation there will be a detailed description about detailed presentation on each and every activity what we do as part of the vendor management great okay. great let's go ahead then right right so here is a small presentation which i have created for the vendor management so creating a comprehensive vendor management checklist involves various aspects mm -hmm. okay, ensuring for a smooth vendor management relationship. It is not only a vendor activity which is involved here, it is as, as also the business team. It's a collaboration activity which has to be done together. Okay. Okay. So, uh, here is a small checklist. The checklist is in form of the presentation so that audience can, everybody will understand why it is so important. And the checklist also is like, uh, I've put just a points, but I talk more so that it, you can uh, relate to the points as well. Okay, moving to the next presentation, next uh, slide here, uh, you need to identify what is your requirement. Just that I early morning get up and as Prabh told uh, coffee, I go with the recipe because I'm very much towards kitchen. So I say tomorrow morning, I need to prepare breakfast, but I don't know what I need to prefer, prepare breakfast. So first I need to uh, identify myself that what is that breakfast which I need to prepare and what are the ingredients do I have? Do I have that ingredients at home or I need to buy? So these are a couple of parameters. By what time I, my breakfast should be ready? And whom do I serve this breakfast? Do I need to pack breakfast my, for my kids and husband? So these are a couple of things which has been, which I need to have a plan. So I need to- Husband can also them. make a breakfast for a wife and right. husband also <laughs> make a breakfast for the kids. Right, right. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I told it's a joint activity. It is exactly. not a single activity. Yeah. So you need to identify <clears throat> your needs. And that needs has to be uh, clearly written, uh, documented, and it has to be communicated to the stakeholders. Yeah. First, internally, you will have to take the approvals once a uh, defined scope has been ready and then send it to the stakeholders that the vendors who are actually looking, uh, you're sharing the requirement and then you can come up with the plan. So identify your needs. So once the needs are established, that is the quantity, quality, price, delivery timelines, compliance, and cultural fit. Great. This cultural fit, I have marked it as Astrid here, but I will come back to you with the cultural fit because I have covered this in my further slides. Hmm. Okay. It is just not having this requirement in place, but also you need to have the organizational goals. I, I will get this vendor today and tomorrow I will get this. They are doing the set of activities oh. on their own, which do not align to our organizational goals, which doesn't make any sense. So organization goals has to be defined in our requirement and vendor also need to understand the organizational requirement. Understood. And we have to be aligned. And technical capabilities, technical capabilities while evaluating or while you document it. These are the specialization uh, teams, specialist teams. We need to SMEs. We need to be part of the project. You need to define uh, two, t uh, two members. You need four members. You need this is the ex uh, skills which you are looking for. All has to be documented. Okay. okay. It is just not that I give a recipe saying that I need idli, dosa, chutney. No, 
as per the requirement as per the market the team also need to be scalable and team also need to have that uh, what do you call innovation skills innovation capabilities also should be as part of the uh, uh, team you need to mention that very clearly okay it's not like the, today we have given them the order saying that you need only idli dosa chutney and they only keep serving you idli dosa chutney idli dosa chutney no that so innovation matter. is definitely required innovation but... is very much required it is the innovation which will be from the project team or from the vendor team it is a joint collaboration they can come up with their ideas vendor and they need to submit their uh, innovations to the project simply i can say it as upselling great right okay and then comes the legal and compliance requirement so vendor will have all the it, it is like organization also has to define the legal and compliance requirement and also uh, vendor also will come up with the legal legal and compliance requirement both has to be uh, mutually agreed and then the final requirement will be submitted to the great one uh, yeah, one thing i want to add here is as you know we are talking about this processes uh, when we say about legal and regulations so i have seen a lot of people get confused with the legal and regulatory word so if you take example of india mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we say legal requirement so it is a law okay regulation right. is basically used to control the industry so we have right. ipc and all that that is a legal mm -hmm. and if you fail to comply with any rbi comply requirements so according to ipc or other acts they will take a decision so it when it come to legal regulatory for the vendor ma management it is mandatory to be follow So well, according right. to that, you need to define. Yeah, thank you. Yes, exactly. So moving one now, we have identified what is our needs, like mm -hmm. what I need to prepare for the day. Then moving ahead, then I need to check whether I need to prepare the batter or I need to get the batter from outside. So this is how I how do I select the vendor? Okay. Okay. Identifying the potential vendors, it's uh, I think it can I can say it's a very tedious job. Exactly. It's a it's a it's a it's a tedious task. But once you're done with that. Mm -hmm. but it it tests your skills and it tests your you know uh right uh, knowledge how you basically on board so that that's matter yeah go right. ahead right. Be because it's not a just one time active i on board them and my task is done no mm. i need to work with them until my project is completed until true. the entire activity is completed so i need to choose the best in the market true so i need to identify the potential vendor and i need to shortlist them just not i take a 20 uh, as soon as i float my proposal there are thousands of people who will reach out to us so identifying each of them is a very critical task you need to be very specific you need to see uh, you need to uh, put lot of uh, effort to identify and shortlist the vendor i agree either you can go in form of bid or you can go in form of proposal right and, yeah while inviting uh, you are floating your requirement either it can be in form of bid or it can be in form of proposal and once you get the proposal which is uh, and after all these activities are hap happen then vendor will submit the proposal you have a huge list of proposals from n number of companies like 20 companies have submitted the proposals yes what all things which you look into it uh, today i need to prepare idli dosa and uh, chutney and then uh, i will be looking at the vendor proposal whether he is uh, capable of preparing basi bale bath okay no the, that the, is not the criteria which you need yeah, to look yeah. for right. so my proposal very clearly states that this is what is my requirement i <clears> need to for this idli dosa chutney and i need to look only for that requirements uh, i i need to see whether they are capable of preparing it i need to see whether the cost is effective they, do they have the technical team what is the process of preparing this uh, whether they prepare it in house or again they outsource it to third party third party is third party so all this things which matters a lot okay then comes the reference check whenever we are going to any hotel or restaurant we see the reviews whenever i buy something on amazon flipkart whatever e-commerce site i look at the reviews before buying three star four star five star rating so this is also the same thing you need to talk to vendors uh, while you float the bid you need to mention in the proposal you need to clearly mention that you need the reference of couple of customers so that the contact details email id will be mentioned just pick up a call and uh, talk to the vendors until you have a reference check you cannot this is simply nothing but a rating rating of the organization rating of the i cannot say it as an organization rating rating of the entire activity which they have similar activity which they have done okay that's great and then i have mentioned cultural fit here because 
while onboarding any resource to the organization we see that the cultural fit is very important right mm. it is not a technical see a guy must be a guy will be specialized in a, a number of activities like sim soar vapt red teaming multiple but he doesn't have a cultural fit he has an attitude issue he says that no i can't do this now i can't do this now that will not fit because you need to uh, abide for the timelines also right You, there are fixed timelines for every activity so when you have a cultural fit with the vendor as well he will understand your uh, what requirement he will understand your pain he will understand what is that exactly you are looking for it once the understanding is good then you have a very good outcome so okay. this is the cultural fit is where uh, many of the organization fail to understand while selecting the uh, vendors i believe cultural is most important because you know even you have a great solutions in place you know right. vendor right. meeting everything requirement but right. if things doesn't meet with the culture it there's no point of implementing so i i do understand i agree agree yeah right right then finally the vendor is selected upon all this evaluation after multiple evaluation the vendor is selected okay. once the vendor is selected it is not like you just tell him that hey you are selected congratulations <laughs> done no once the vendor is selected you need to take the signature from him that is the documentation part has to be very accurate which is not only with the vendor there are multiple teams at vendor uh, end and with the uh, customer as well both of them has to sign the document and vendor onboarding will be done that's great yeah one critical one small point which every organization fail is that uh, once a vendor is onboarded or vendor is uh, finally selected the people for example there are 10 uh, proposals which have been submitted by multiple vendors mm. okay out of which one or two we pick up from one we pick it up okay and rest right, uh, nine of them we fail to communicate it to them okay so the, saying that uh, any small message so we regret to inform you that uh, this we could not go ahead with your proposal we, you don't have to disclose that with which vendor are you going with at least a communication which gives them a message that okay fine they don't have to wait for like is that the order which is coming or it, will i be going through this process <clears throat> so it is very important that team has to any team who is managing they will have to communicate it to the other nine people nine teams nine companies who have participated in the bid or the proposal it it make lot of matlab uh, uh, it make lot of effect on them as well okay they have acknowledged our proposal we have been working with them sorry info, sorry message has to be sent we regret to inform you that here we could not go with your proposal this makes a lot of difference with the vendor as well okay so cultural fit and communicating it to the vendor who have not been selected has to be considered while selecting the vendor and that is the most important part yeah. most important thing right okay right. so now we have done with the vendor selection hmm. now how do you compare so you have all the products in place you have multiple teams you are confused now whom to pick and what to pick and how to pick hmm. so choosing the right, uh, right vendor is a big challenge so as i told uh, you have so many uh, you need a product a but you are looking at the product b requirement mm. so that should not happen so when you are looking for a product a the product a details and the specification commercial cost technical details everything has to be considered and you need to compare against only that not against product b okay every proposal has to be detailed Re review of every proposal has to be done and the requirement as mentioned you need to look at the requirement and the alignment of it as well okay evaluation of cost quality and reliability okay this is the main parameter which you will have to look into it other factors like legal compliance and cultural fit all these things also matters a lot and decision would be based on the majority like uh, they might go as a board meeting or a team meeting or evaluation checklist based on the organization requirement they will evaluate the overall re requirement okay and communicate it to the successful vendors and communicate it to the unsuccessful vendors as well so but i have seen you know a lot of time if mm -hmm. this is not successful the customer doesn't notify the vendor so it's not a good practice right 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 this is where our, uh, everybody lack that you need to communicate it to the unsuccessful vendor and what kind of information we should give uh, you know is it okay to share the information about the reason of uh, you don't have to the specify the reason like <clears throat> i apply for multiple jobs but i get a regret mail every mail doesn't say that why you you fail to 
meet the requirement right mm-hmm. if i know in person any of the hr or any if it has gone through any reference then i will get to know that why i am not been suitable for that position but if i am just applying it through some of the portal then they just send a regret message saying that sorry we could not meet your we could, we could not onboard you sorry and regret message has been sent okay so this is how if you send a regret message uh, communication to them very clearly they will not wait for us anymore but is it happening like th- does the company does <laughs> very very few of them they do this okay okay yeah not not many of them they do okay okay so i would say this would be the best practice uh, they should start uh, telling the vendors that it's an ac- unsuccessful proposal okay okay next comes the contract negotiation contract negotiation it's very very critical it's like uh, terms and conditions terms and conditions when you buy any product online you say the terms and conditions are very 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 <clears throat> small. you cannot see that so here also the terms and conditions though it is very small it has to be read there are multiple teams who will read this terms and conditions terms and conditions are not bound only with sls and commercials okay, okay. there are legal aspect of it they are pricing sles and uh, again uh, compliance part of it there are so many factors which will be considered for the compliance part, uh, the contract negotiation okay so where i mentioned price and payment terms are, are to be negotiated protection action it's like you have a data for example the data is been stored in third party for example i have the data which is stored in any of the cloud provider so what is the protection which they will be taking right okay. those things has to be documented it is the project activity and the protection activity both has to be mentioned in the document in the contract and penalties if you penalties imp- penalties no one <laughs> want to face so yeah i understand it's it's just not the penalties it's incentives also you need to mention there for example oh. this is what is my uh, target for this year and you achieve this much target what would be the incentives this is like upselling right so mm. both has to be mentioned plus and minus people only talk about plus they don't mention about minus so mention see when you uh, when you get through any of the certification we celebrate right here also same thing when the cur- person is onboarded to the project or onboarded to the uh, to the organization you need to ch- congratulate him if he is then moving out you need to say sorry so both the ways it has to be communicated and 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 uh, you know but this this is something you know people used to ignore i, I i've seen that yes 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 you you need to people should not ignore okay yeah and flexibility and adaptability first main thing is flexibility yes you come it has to be a flexibility it's not like you have a project plan already in place which is approved by the management and now the project manager comes tomorrow and say that no no this is not what i am looking for can you <laughs> call this changes so in between he comes up with a big change where your project entire project will, will get delayed exactly. he has the capability vendor has the capability of doing it and he is very good in adapting for all the changes but you need to plan that as well and ensure that the same flexibility and adaptability mechanism is with the vendor as well true okay and everything has to be reviewed and approved it is not that just mm-hmm. that a project manager has to uh, approve it, <clears throat> it is the entire uh, I, i would say a senior management has to take initiative and then approve this okay great finally a signature it's just not the signature yes it has to be documented okay and what kind of signatures document like what is your view on that well any best practices you want to suggest for the documentation part again, about that sec- yes again initially it used to happen like they used to have a hard copy where it used to sign on now it is like all digitalized signature mm-hmm. just digital signature and ensure that those are those the digital signature which you are have are encrypted mm-hmm. multi factor authenticated couple of security mechanism which you will need to put in place for this signatures as well great ensure that you are talking to the right person ensure that you send a email to the right uh, recipient so couple of security measures which you need to take or precautions which you need to take before signing any of the document understood so moving to the next part is vendor onboarding vendor onboarding yes it's my first day of the job yeah i am been onboarded <laughs> right so vendor has been onboarded you just tell him that okay you you sign this document you sign this document document has been archived everything is done you have been onboarded done no that should not happen you need to have a proper communication how this onboarding will happen when is the new vendor onboarding inform to the uh, stakeholders 
how this onboarding will happen, who will be the stakeholders, uh, communicate the proper communication channel has to be there. Okay. So as per the requirement, you need to set the expectation on the day of onboarding. Every time you need to keep setting the expectation. It's not the new expectation. I mean, it is the, uh, the same expectation which is set in the initial phase. Right. Okay. And provide them training. I just gave my system and say, yeah, give them a laptop, give them the VPN, give them monitor, give them everything. What? <clears throat> No, you need to provide them access, right? Uh, you, and you need to provide them training as well. It's just not giving them all the required physical equipments to start working. No, mm -hmm. you need to provide them training. Proper information has to be provided because they know how the activity has to be completed. But as per your organization, how do you want that to be uh, completed? So for that, you need to give them proper training, proper information has to be provided, just providing them access. Okay, fine, I'll give you access as soon as you, are, you, are, you have onboarded, only read-only access is provided. No, you need to see that what set of access is required for them to complete the task. So respective access has to be provided. Great. And then once providing the access during all these communications while are happening, there's a new person sitting in the team and the manager walks in and or any of the other team member walks in and say that, hey, I've been seeing him. This He's a new guy. <laughs> it should not be like a surprise for them saying. So you need to always introduce to the respective stakeholders saying that either it is a new employee or it is a vendor who a third party team who is sitting in house. Just introduce him to the respective stakeholders saying that this are the set of activities performed by them. And this is, whatever it has been communicated, everything has to be recorded. What is the project plan? What is the deadline? Who will be working on it? What is the timeline? Everything has to be documented and communicated okay. to the stakeholders. Documenting and communicating is the two parameters which every organization fail. So here we need to document and communicate it to the respective channel. Great. Okay. And how do you monitor? The person is coming every day to office. Vendor, uh, it might be a vendor who is working at his premise or he is working at our organization. We don't know, right? What is he working? How do you measure the performance of that? Okay, You need to establish a key performance indicator, like a reporting structure has to be there. Like what is the exact activity the vendor is working on? Fix the timeline to submit the report, whether it's a weekly report, fortnightly report, or a monthly report. Who would be the stakeholders? What is the activity which has been completed till date? What is the milestone and what is the completion date? So you can define the reports as per your requirement and submit it to the respective stakeholders. Okay. And this has to be initial while the documentation phase while initial phase this has to be documented saying the weekly performance report monthly performance report and uh, this will be submitted to the stakeholders this has to be communicated and this also has to be documented okay and and regular assessments on the activities which have been performed either it is a quantitative analysis or quantitative assessment or it is a qualitative assessment as per your requirement you can come up with your own reporting structure great it is just not that I am doing this, I am doing this, I am doing this. No, <clears throat> it's not self more self boosting what you are doing it right. You need to show what is the negative part of it, what is the positive part of it, right? Mm -hmm. That is how you can come up with the new innovations. I spoke about the new innovations in my previous slide. Here also, it's the same thing. You need to come up with. See, you need to address the issue. When you address the issue, first thing is you need to highlight the issue. What is the issue which is happening? And second thing is you need if you have any new technology which can resolve the issue. Yes, come up with the new. Uh, your uh, solution and submit it to the stakeholders, submit it to the management saying that this is what is the issue which is currently we are facing and this solution and this would be the cost. If the budget is approved by the uh, team, yes, they will accept it, right? Why do you, uh, it's, I have seen many of the times it's just that I have done this, I have done this, I have done this. This is this is what we have done. These many reports we have submitted, color, color reports are presented. No, please don't do that. Yes, appreciate the team is putting a lot of effort to come up with the uh, end of the project or to meet the deadline, everything that is set of activities. Also show the negative part or address the issues, I could say. When you address the issue, management also will be aware because if this is like a third eye view. Okay. So once you address these issues, feedbacks will be accepted. And because if it's a major risk, 
management also will be happy to address what all the issues which the team is facing mm -hmm. and they will try to address the situation and as part of continuous in, uh, improvement please adopt all the changes it's not like are vendor ne bola then why should i adopt this it's okay fine <laughs> <laughs> it's not my team member or management who has told me it's somebody vendor who has told me this to do it please don't do that there might be the feedback which you might not like which you might not accept accept the feedback you want it you implement it if you don't want it please don't implement it <clears throat> and and you know here it also matter you know sometime there is a favoritism is there you know bribe right. is there so in that case yes. they follow the same process yeah right 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 don't go with bias look at the product where look at the project what they are working on look at your final deliverables what is that exactly you are trying to achieve at the end of the day or end of the quarter what you want to deliver for that this feedback might be might not be a great uh, change but at least this feedback might help it some way and the person who has given the feedback also will feel happy good and Very then important. right and just not uh, a, a set of activities which you are doing you need to submit the reports or overall performance report ensure that you submit the overall performance report which includes the positive of the pro project and the negative of the project both has to be submitted great so wherein you will come up with a continuous improvement plan i have a key point which i'll discuss in the next all uh, next uh, slide even that has to be considered as the a reporting factor okay okay and then last and final thing with the third point very important point which they fail to appreciate the vendor for all the good work which they have done okay it might be a resource or it might be an organization who is supporting your project <clears throat> or done and dusted no please don't do that at least appreciate for the good work which they have done if it's a single resource who is working them appreciate as part he is part of your team he is part of your team to work on multiple activities but he is not part of the performance which he is about to get it might not be a performance uh, performance cycle of your organization but at least recognize him what good work he has done for and this is what we you know we don't take you know we take the vendors and granted and you know if it's okay he done that it would be great but are vendor he will do it ah he will do that you know so this is what we have observed so right. now that that's very good point you know we should appreciate also their positive and we should also give a question on negative state things what they're doing exactly exactly yeah. negative is nothing but uh, nothing wrong it's uh, area of improvement consider that put a, instead of the statement saying negative consider it as co continuous improvement <clears throat> Right. Yeah. These are the couple of parameters. These are the uh, points which you need to consider while doing a performance monitoring. Okay. And next, moving to the risk management, which is a critical part. So okay. here, during the performance management, while I told you that I have another important point, which is the risk management. This performance report, the last line, which says that the performance report should include the risk management. Also. But do you, do you wish to share any KPIs? examples sample kpis for the vendor management and if you go back to the previous slide mm -hmm. <clears throat> we are talking performance monitoring and all that definitely it's done based on a kpi and all that so do you have any suggestion kpis yeah the, the parameters what you have set for your activities that would be the kpi right for example okay. i need to uh, for ex yeah i will go with my breakfast only I need to uh, achieve, uh, I need to prepare idli, dosa, chutney and mm -hmm. how quick to prepare. So as and when I start doing my activities, for example, I can prepare in three minutes, dosa. So as and when I keep preparing, <clears throat> I can prepare it quick, multiple ways, mm -hmm. multiple uh, parameters. That is how uh, key, uh, key performance indicators are being set. Okay. Okay. I cannot specify a key performance indicator at this point because every project has their own key performance indicator. Like, for example, it might be a reporting structure or it might be number of tickets which they are logging in, how quick the resolution has been provided on each ticket. For example, initially, they might take until you understand the entire <clears> example, <throat> uh, It is a managed uh, service activity which has been outsourced to another service provider. There you have number of tickets which has been logged. Okay, first initial 15 days, they say that, okay, we'll see only the volume, how many tickets have been raised. And okay. next fortnight, they will say that, okay, we will categorize it into P1, P2, P3. That's which great. is, these, these parameters are already defined uh, because you cannot just put, say that, okay, you resolve the issue within five minutes, 10 minutes. You cannot <laughs> say that, right? A vendor no. also has to understand our environment. 
for that again the third week they'll say that okay fine now you have uh, you have uh, number of tickets now you have category and then you say that uh, how quick will you resolve the p1 tickets how quick will you resolve the p2 tickets how quick will you resolve the p3 tickets right in p1 tickets right why is this frequently which is happening is there anything that we can take uh, which uh, which we can uh, see a common point why these issues are happening and we can get that fixed so a couple of parameters which which uh, like uh, resolution time a quick resolution time i could say as a key performance indicator it was 5 minutes then it come to 4 minutes then you have uh, you have analyzed the number of tickets the similar pattern has been analyzed and you'll say okay fine i'll write a use case for this so that there is no uh, a ticket which has been triggered for the same issue again but is it a good practice to you know proactively work on the kpis before we onboard the vendor or it is a good practice to do this after onboarding a vendor See, it depends upon the uh, project requirement, how yeah. you will have to evaluate this book, whether it is before or after. Uh, if it's before, what you will do is you will take the sample reports. Understood. And you will have the testimony of it. And you will ask them, or a POC will be conducted, a, a proof of concept will be conducted, and you will see how uh, well we can manage with the pre POC. Then if it is okay. after, everything is live. You okay. have the uh, live scenario in place and how quickly you can do with this. Excellent. Thanks. Thank you so much. Yes. The next important factor is as a performance monitoring, you will also have to include the risk management. I have not covered very brief about risk management because there is already a session of risk management. Yeah. Which covered. So here just a few points I've covered. it. You need to identify the potential risk of the vendor. Okay, you need to categorize the risk. It's just not that every risk which comes in flags out for me in my tool saying every risk has to be immediately mitigated. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, that you need to categorize the risk, whether it's a uh, high risk, medium <coughs> risk, risk mm -hmm. or low, low risk. Mm -hmm. Once you categorize it, action as per the defined timeline. Or you want to transfer the risk, you want to mitigate the risk based on the activity assigned, you can do it. You need to have a mitigation strategy in place. Okay. And as the risk uh, tracker says that you will have to every half yearly or quarterly based on the timeline which is defined by the organization, you will have to review the risk mitigation plan and continuous implement what are the actions as part of the continuous implement plan. Okay. okay. Insurance. Yes, this is one of the critical aspects. Every slide has one, one point very critical which I have covered here. This slide covers about the insurance. Uh -huh. So insurance, you might say that everybody say, oh, I've taken the insurance for my organization. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. What does your insurance cover? It is just not that, see, there is a human insurance, uh, uh, life insurance, there is accidental insurance. There are a couple of other various types of insurance. Here also, it's the same thing. What type of insurance have you taken? So you need to consider that insurance factor as well. And, you know, most of the companies basically, you know, uh, <clears throat> uh, you can say most of the companies basically miss this particular point insurance because they're saying, okay, we are just transferring the risk to vendor for this. So we don't need a cyber insurance or other insurance. Okay. So what is the important tips and tricks you want to suggest when it comes to insurance consideration in the vendor management? Yeah. The vendor management insurance is like, what is the set of activity that you are doing with the vendor? So okay. For example, if it is a data management which you are doing with the vendor, so where is the data actually hosted? You need mm. to see whether it is an in-house hosting or it is on a vendor platform. Okay. If it is an in-house hosting, who will take the insurance? Insurance okay. is being opted by the company or it is by the vendor. Okay. And how, how, why, before uh, taking the insurance, you need to see that how secure is your platform, right? Mm. You need to have all the controls in place. Without having any controls in place, I say that I've taken insurance. Insurance, ye chala gaya to insurance de dega mere ko. No, it's not like that. You need to have all the security controls in place. For example, if it's related to data encryption, transfer of the data, uh, how secure you're transferring the data, how how you're storing the data, where are you storing the data, how old is the data, how long do you want to store the data? And again, it is not just these parameters. You will have to comply with the local regulations as well. Okay. The geographical location also has to be considered. So a couple of parameters that vendor also has to take care and uh, business team also has to take care. And top of it, who will pay the insurance? That has uh, to be, yeah, 
money matters here again. money matters right right who will pay for the insurance that has to be discussed approved signed and then taken it forward this this was the point i was talking about initially you know we we give attention to everything but when right. it comes to the requirement of you know implementing or you know other parameters and all that this is basically we skip it's right. it's it's very important you know <clears throat> how you basically mentioning the security and how you define the functions and all that that that's matter actually right yeah. right just not like people what they say that i have taken the insurance for my organization everything is covered what is that everything which is covered insurance team will not cover everything they 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 will cover everything as much as you pay they will cover everything but what is that everything that as part of your list you need to have the proper list right exactly and that yeah, is that something is missing yeah. yeah that proper list has to be defined discussed approved and then you will have to say yes vendor will uh, look into these many aspect <clears throat> and business team will look into these many when we fail to the, these two aspects then the insurance will fall in place and that is the and, and 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 th those who are watching this video yes so those who are watching the video so it's you know the what the point of which uh, you know kavita has discussed about insurance kindly give attention to that because i have seen in past you know literally customers struggle with that area yes. so you need to plan accordingly yeah thank, thank you. you a small th th tip here while i'm traveling while hmm. anybody traveling booking tickets whether it's a flight ticket bus ticket or train ticket any of the ticket where you see that you, do you need insurance right you have you have a check box there we blindly click that but you need to see that what are the components which are covered here also it's the same thing like what are the components which are covered as part of your insurance just have that read that multiple times whether it falls under the business team who has to read whether it falls in the legal team who has to read whether it falls in the hr team who has to read read those instructions very carefully if you do not know any of the component that you are the responsible person please raise the red flag saying that i am not the responsible person for this content which has been mentioned here so that the respective team will handle it it's not like yes yes i read this check 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 done Don't because know. you are a contable yes once you check that box either by intention <laughs> or by mistake yes done just a insurance pay we just uh, blindly say yes 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 to accept terms and conditions this will not work out here agree. every aspect has to be read and then accepted i agree with that point and moving to the next part is relationship building right develop a positive and a collaboration relationship with the vendor as i told you initially there is a vendor team who is sitting in house who are supporting our project and they are ensuring that the project will meet the deadline the project will go live on the specific date they are putting lot of effort right though he is a vendor he is a team who is sitting who is helping our project to work right so you need to have a good positive relationship to them with them so as and when you have a positive relationship or you have a good relationship with the vendor your activity goes on very smooth while you are working uh, a vendor is working silo and we are also in silo there is no proper communication vendor will not communicate because of ego issue and business team also will not communicate that guy has to come to me why will i go to him at end of the day i will see it during contract termination or contract renewal True. no never do that <laughs> this is not a grudge activity here this is the project activity which where you are expecting a project to be delivered as per the timeline right so here it is a regular communication it's are it's okay fine every fortnight i'm sending a uh, weekly review deck every week i am being part of the management review meeting why should i communicate or why should i talk to him please don't have that attitude because the project will not run successfully talk to them they are they are also part of the team who is working vice versa whether it's a vendor or it is a business team please talk to them have a regular feedback regular communication with them okay any communication which you are doing one person from this team and one, one person from the vendor team they talk very nicely and they don't even think what is happening they uh, either ka baat udhar udhar ka baat idhar please don't do that have a transparent communication transparent communication is not that uh passing whatever critical information from the project team to vendor team vendor team to project team that is not no what is required for the project to run successfully that you will have to communicate it very transparent it is on a mail whether it is on a team meeting whatever it is you will have to communicate it very transparent then we'll say that chai pe milta hai chai pe baat kar please don't that there's the thousands of things which happens but you will have to communicate it 
and documented. Every communication, critical communication has to be documented. When you do not talk to them properly, it just problem cannot be solved. Let him struggle. I will get back to him. When I need to solve, I will solve the problem. That is how will be the attitude. Please don't have that. And, and previously, they keep the keep the both relations separate. You know, office and yes, yes, office relation is separate. Project activity is separate. Yeah. Do not mix both together. He is my enemy. I will not work on this project. No, please <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Then flexibility and adaptability. The same word which I had mentioned it before. I'm again telling flexibility. Any market changes any because technology is not as today. Today the technology is there, and tomorrow you find the latest technology. Vendor also has to have that capability, and the same thing. Team project team also ha will have to have that accessibility capability. So, and then last is celebrate success. I'm highlighted here. Celebrate success. If the project is live, please do not ignore the vendor. <laughs> I'm not people ignore that. Vendor buyers <laughs> or business buyers person, but I know the pain. Uh, because even I am being in a part of vendor position. I am being in a part of business team. So please celebrate the success together. And so people that, miss that. <laughs> yes, yes. See, every milestone there is a success, right? Every yeah. milestone they celebrate. So involve them as part of your team. Success, uh, celebrate the success, and then the next milestone will be very yeah. uh, smooth. I agree. Success, celebrate, and then contract renewal and termination. So when you have a good relationship with the vendor and the business team, here plays the major role. Contract renewal or termination. This is one of the point. This doesn't. This is the major point I say, but this is one of the point. For that, to renewal or termination, you need to meet a couple of criteria, like points to be considered while renewing or termination. Annual contract must be reviewed every year. The contract must be reviewed. It is not like uh, I have the contract and it goes on, goes on, goes on. No, every year the contract must renew. This is the uh, this is the point where people fail to look at the contract. And 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 I've seen that you know, uh, mm -hmm. once the person signed the contract, that is gone. So it's very important to review the contract. Mm -hmm. You know, we also check. You know, uh, what is the you know. Is the things going as per the contract? So there's right. no, they, they don't check that, which is basically right. quite surprising. Yeah. Right, right. <clears throat> Any, uh, contract has to be checked. Why? Because there are a couple of uh, points which I want to highlight. Why the contract has to be checked? Technology, as I mentioned, technology today you have a, a type of technology. Tomorrow you might not find the technology. Day after tomorrow you might not find the technology. That technology. Yes, there are a lot of changes in the technologies which are happening today. I signed the contract. By the time my project goes live, it will take six months, right? By six months, technology is tremendously changed. Might not be in all the projects, but yes, technology will change. So you will have to renew the contract. Whether you contract, whether you will still have to maintain the same technology, or you will go with the latest technology based on the project requirement. Please review the contract. Right. Exactly. You and resources who are deployed for that project will not have a set of skill. So you will have to upgrade the skill as well, right? You cannot have the same set of resource to do something which he is not uh, uh, trained for. True. Yeah. So that is why contract renewal is very important. Monitor performance. Yes, you need to continuously monitor performance. See, uh, it's just not a personal thing which uh, comes here. It is actual project deliverables. I am telling. Monitor the project performance. How, where did we start the project? How was the project going on? Is the continuous improvement happening? And after placing the continuous improvement in place, how was the project status? Are we meeting the deadlines? Are we getting the right resources? Uh, is are we meeting the main point as the commercials? Are we not over exceeding the budget? So these are the points you will have to consider while performance monitoring. Okay. And Collaborating in problem solving. It is your work. You please do it. You, I'm been hired. You have been hired here. You please do it. That should not be the attitude because access control or any of the changes, any of the assets or any of the physical assets which has to be provided, which will be with the business team. And he says, "Okay, I know what is happening, but I don't want to help him out because he did that to me. I, I will do this to him." Please do not have that attitude while working. It's a collaborative in problem solving and adapt as per the market changes. Again, legal will play a play a major ro role in contract uh, because you will have to look into the local law. 
you will have to look into the geographic law and you will have to there are so many parameters that you will have to look into it okay and like i told background verification of the resource so these all part of the legal legal and hr okay after all these activities which are done you will decide whether you will have to go with the same vendor or you will have to terminate the vendor mm -hmm. right so that is why if you have it for one year you will get to know the vendor capability vendor skill and then you you will get to know whether you'll have to go with the same vendor or you want to change the vendor if you have to change the vendor follow the process one to ten slides which i have shown now if you have to go with the vendor celebrate the success true and i've seen that here you know a lot of people uh, struggle on the part of whether it meeting the requirement customer perspective and all that so i do understand you know when it comes to the integrations or when you're talking about the requirements and all mm -hmm. that until as you don't monitor you cannot mm -hmm. able to implement those functions so it's good to have a monitoring till terminations right right because that visibility you right. get there right. yeah. some sometimes yeah. what happens is anyway my contract will get terminated why <laughs> should i monitor that will be the <clears throat> of some people they don't monitor no at, at, see show it till the last day to your working right show the performance show the monitoring show the activities whatever you're doing till the last date and then you can say that yes boss i've done till date why don't you can consider me for uh, why did you consider me for termination you will have all evidence with you to go with the same vendor right so same client right that is one of the parameter wherein renewal also plays a major role I agree and the termina uh, post termination yes you were asking for the feedback right why how do we communicate hmm. so the project is completed uh, project is not completed but the tenure is completed you have overrid the budget then you say that okay fine i'm not going with this vendor i'll go with another vendor while going to another vendor you will terminate the current existing vendor and the same process whatever we talked for last 30 minutes the same process will continue for the new vendor post termination yes vendor will come back saying can we have a termination meeting Yes, you will have a termination meeting and then you will uh, project them what are the why reasons for termination that has okay. to be projected. So that that will be area of improvement for the vendor. We the need to give a, we need to give a valid justification. Valid justification. It has to be documented during the audit. Yes, you terminated this vendor with no reason you terminated. Yes, these are the reasons why we terminated this vendor. Understood. And this re renewal and termination, uh, post-termination meetings also, which will be very effective for the vendor. Okay. And whatever the activities which we have done till now, it has to be maintained, documented, and recorded. For that, you need to see. There are so many lists which are coming up. So for that, you need to have a master. Any of the activities, it might be an audit, it might be a vendor management, it might be a risk assessment. You need to have a master checklist, master list of records for vendor management. What are the set of records which I have in my repository? Do I follow all this criteria? Whether the master list would uh, will, for example, master list will have like uh, vendors, ADA card, PAN card. Have you collected this? It might be a small point, but if the, if you miss that, then you will have to go back to vendor again, asking them, can you submit these documents? Okay. So and it is important, right? It is important. Because I have not seen most of the companies maintain that master. Is it like, is it? It is advisable. To, it is advisable. It is not mandate, but it is advisable to maintain. Because today I am with this organization. Tomorrow I, I might not be with this organization, right? Always it has to be, organization has to run on a process based. It is not on a resource based. Okay. If you want to run the organization on a process based, ensure to have this list of records with you. Okay. If you want to run the organization as a person based, yes, you don't need. I, I remember what all things I have done from the project to onboard the multiple vendors. I have everything in my laptop. Tomorrow I will uh, uh, just say, write a hmm. note and move out. That should not be. So everything should be a process oriented. Okay. So master list of records, which will cover every vendor. Mm -hmm. And uh, what all documents which we have collected, what all documents that we have shared with the vendor, all this list of records will be there. It might be a uh, uh, checklist or you can use tools to do it or uh, based on the organization requirement, you can do it. Okay. Okay. I've done the project. See, for example, I, uh, now I have explained to you like five slides, 10 slides, which we finished now. Right? All this is uh, all uh, done. My project is also delivered. Hmm. It, after that, I don't need these documents. No, you need to completely archive those documents 
contract agreement financial performance review metrics uh, legal documents compliance and the trainings what you give it to the vendor training uh, why need, why i need to record the trainings of vendor which i have given you might ask no during the previous slide which i tried uh, which i was talking contract renewal or termination during this process you can say that yes i have trained this vendor on these topics this might be a audit trail okay okay an audit trail or any other project related documents it might be a small document but ensure to archive all the documents if the project okay. is completed yes it will be in your quick catch and if the project is completed please put it on archive and mention the timeline also discuss the timeline with the management and then archive the documents okay and once a project is completed you say that okay fine the project is completed documents are archived yes done no you need to ensure backup and security measures also why is the security why the access control in place i i am done with the project a i am going to project b i am done with the project b i am going to the project c i meet one of my friend uh, uh, for a party and say hey i was working on that project okay fine i have this documents with me i will get it to you don't worry right why a person working on a project c why he needs a documents of project a right so ensure that remove the access of the resource who is moving out of the project so please in this is very critical this point i need to highlight more once a resource has moved out of the project he is working on another project which is not related to this project please remove the access okay this is how you maintain the records and documentation and we also have a version history and uh, change management process and all right, that which is right, used to track right, the process okay this, right right great which be part of all the uh, uh, while writing the document we have the version control right the Understood. same thing right yeah. then moving to question and answers if you have any questions please let me know if you do not have any questions now please write a note below this video i will respond to you all the questions and i am also going to share uh, kavita uh, linkedin profile also so if anyone having any doubt any questions you know you can reach out to uh, kavita directly and do let me know uh, can we invite kavita for next one more session because she is a project manager also she she do a lot of consultings in isms and all that do let me know what is the next video you want uh, from us uh, from kavita i will definitely try to disturb her okay <laughs> pleasure so, please so and uh, do let us know that we are planning on grc practical series so, uh, i'm thinking to you know to do that with kavita so do let me know in the comment box can we drive that session and your comments are very important because that comments help us to improve our content for Thank me you. it was a new I, i got some of the pointers like doc management you said master record i was not aware about kavita mm -hmm. and thanks for that and it is free free for me actually so you know even in a paid session i don't get such information so thank you so much for this that you have uh, contributed for this particular project and i'm sure you know we're looking forward for more sessions like that in future sure sure sure, sure. happy to happy to collaborate and uh, conduct more sessions with you thank you thank you kamita so this is all from our side team do let us know what is the feedback you have and uh, do share your feedback in the comment box which is help us to improve the content if you new to the channel do subscribe to the youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic good day bye